TL Travelers and welcome to or welcome back to the TL Travel YouTube channel. We are home from Mexico. It is freaking freezing in Alberta right now. Um, I am dreaming <laughs> of the sun and the beaches, but I'm also dreaming of the food. I miss the food so, so much. And I, I don't know, I feel like I've been talking about food in Mexico on social media for an eternity. But today I am going to impart some foodie wisdom on you guys. So if you wanna check out some of the foodie adventures that we got up to in Mexico City, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you are going to Mexico City in the upcoming future, uh, you might wanna make note of a few of these spots as well because there's so much food and overwhelming amount of food in Mexico City, but we've sort of sussed out our top favorites and also got some input from um, a few people that actually were born there, grew up there, their thoughts on where we should and shouldn't be eating. So yeah, we've got some tips coming up for you here and maybe a few spots that you haven't seen on a ton of blogs all over the place. So Hopefully that'll be helpful as well. So right off the top, I'm gonna make two disclaimers. The first disclaimer is that we stayed in the Zona Rosa area. So most of the places that we explored were like Condesa, Roma, uh, Romita, and then we went downtown and also just like a little bit around our hotel. So that's sort of the area that we are focusing on. A lot of the restaurants that we went to are a little bit more expensive by the standards, like traveler standards in Mexico. They're not necessarily backpacking prices, but if you are a Canadian or American traveler, they would come in right around the same price as it would cost if you were to go out at home and enjoy a meal. So just something to keep in mind when you're taking a look at these places. That said though, my number one recommendation for eating in Mexico City is on the more budget side, and that is going to be definitely 100% to check out the food vendors, the food stands, the taco stands in Mexico city wherever you are not only is that going to be the best way for you to taste test a bunch of different uh, mexican dishes but that's also going to be less of an expensive way to dine i would say that on average a taco or two at a street vendor is going to cost you the equivalent of maybe two canadian dollars versus a taco at a nicer restaurant which is going to cost you closer to, you know, six or seven dollars. So just keep that in mind. So if you are a little bit nervous about eating at street vendors and street stands, I can totally relate to that. One of the tricks that we like to use when we travel is to go to street vendors that seem to have like a lineup or more people eating there, especially more locals eating there, so that you know that it is kind of a trusted spot and you can assume that it's good food if the locals are eating there. And if you are still a little bit skeptical about it, I would definitely 100% and recommended doing a walking tour or a taco tour. We did a free walking tour with Cactus Tours and we had such a great time. I will leave a link to that tour in the description below. Now, when I say free walking tour, you are definitely expected to sort of, it's more of a pay what you will, um, but not only did we get to learn so much about Mexico City and the history of Mexican food, but we got to try a bunch of different taco stands. They had vegetarian options, vegan options, all of that kind of stuff. So that was really cool. And if you are looking for a budget way to explore the food scene in Mexico, I would definitely recommend it. The second spot that I'm going to talk about that was one of our favorites in Mexico City was Fondafina, and that is in the uh, Condesa area, the Condesa neighborhood, closer to Parque Mexico and Parque España, just like a little bit up from there. We actually met up with a friend who lives in Mexico City. She recommended Fondafina to us and we went there and absolutely loved it. You can order the food there, sort of they have like main meals and they also have dishes that you can order tapas style. So we chose to do a tapas style and share a bunch of little dishes between the three of us. They had some pretty cool cocktails there as well, but one of our favorites was trying the grasshopper tostadas. Yes, you heard me correctly. Grasshopper tostadas. Um, we tried that there. One of the reasons why we chose to try it there was because when they make the grasshopper tostadas, they do them in a way where it's still mixed in with other ingredients. They kind of dress them up a little bit. Typically, from what we've heard from locals in Mexico City, um, the way that they would eat them would be more, or I guess, less dressed up. So we wanted to sort of ease our way into that traditional dish and actually, kind of really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it tasted really good and I wasn't too bothered by the grasshoppers once I wrapped my mind around it. 
Derek, on the other hand, thought it tasted good, but he had a harder time with the psychology, the, the, the thought of eating the grasshoppers and like the knowledge of all their little legs. So um, I would definitely recommend giving it a try if you are feeling a little adventurous. And even if you're not gonna go for the grasshopper dishes, um, check out Fondafina regardless, it was great. Our third recommendation is gonna be in the downtown area. We checked out Azul Historical. We actually went there with a friend of ours, his brother lives in Mexico City, was born in Mexico City, and that was his recommendation. It was a little bit of a fancier spot in a beautiful location just off of the walking street that's down there. So the ambiance was really cool. The like inside, it was like an indoor outdoor courtyard kind of vibe and the roof was like the leaves of the trees that were growing through the restaurant. If that makes any sense. I'll try and like throw in a photo. Not only did we love the vibe there, but also the food was super good. There was a lot of really traditional dishes that we got to try there. And we also chose to dine there in more of a traditional style. I will say I was particularly fond of the ceviche. I don't know, I just love a good ceviche and the ceviche and guacamole there was really, really good. They also try at Azul Historico to kind of pull in some more traditional elements to uh, the food. So there was like a woman there who was making the handmade uh, tortillas and that was just really cool to see. And they did some like table side services as well. So that was just like, it was just good vibe, good food, good location all around would definitely recommend. My fourth recommendation is in fact, not Mexican food at all. Sometimes you just need to like, step away after eating 150,000 tacos um, and try something <laughs> different. So another type of food that Derek and I both really enjoy is Argentinian food. So we checked out a place that was pretty close to where we were staying in uh, Zona Rosa. So La Provoleta, I believe that's how you pronounce it, uh, is located in the Roma neighborhood. And we went there for Argentinian dining. They do all of that, like where they bring out the different meats and things for your dishes and then you can pick your meat and then they um, cook it up for you right there, which is really cool. If you are not a like meat eater, there are vegetarian options available for you as well. We really, really enjoyed the food there. And again, it's in like a really nice little location on like a street corner. You can do some people watching. We did choose to sit outside and enjoy the views from outside. And I will say that um, we did not necessarily consider the fact that there would be people coming up trying to sell us things and all that kind of stuff, which we probably should have because that's just how it is when you're traveling. But if that's the kind of thing that's gonna interrupt your dining experience, definitely choose to sit inside at a window and like enjoy the views from indoors while you're eating. Um, but either way, we really enjoyed our meal there and that's another one that I would recommend. And then fifth on my list is gonna be El Moro and that is for dessert. That's for the churros. That's right, oh my gosh. So good. So there are a few different locations for El Moro. The ones that we saw were in Roma and Polenco, I believe, um, but they do have some different locations. When we first sort of saw them um, and saw that there was like more than one, that they were a bit more of a chain, we were a little concerned that they were gonna be like, kind of like Tim Hortons in Canada, where it's like, everybody loves their Tim Hortons, they go get their Timmies, all that kind of stuff. But like at the end of the day, is their coffee the most amazing? No. Um, you know, are their donuts the most amazing? No. So we were a little bit concerned that that would not be the ideal place to get churros. However, once we met up with a few locals, um, that was 100% what was recommended to us. And it turns out that the first, the original El Moro was in Mexico City. There's like a really large one, I believe, downtown and because they are so so good they have expanded throughout the city but they're just as good the churros were great and then also their hot chocolate was delicious and great for like kind of a cool night in Mexico City because Mexico City is a little bit cooler especially in the evenings than you would think of Mexico as being if you're used to just like going to all the resorts and stuff like that so we went out the one evening and had churros and hot chocolate and just kind of like sat out on the sidewalk again people walking people walking people watching um and just like really enjoyed ourselves so i would certainly recommend that now i know that i did say top five but i am going to throw in one uh honorable mention because this isn't technically in mexico city but if you are heading out to explore the pyramids like we did 
We stopped on the way back at La Gruta, which was just like the coolest dining experience ever. If you didn't see that vlog, I will link it above. Basically, you're dining in like a cave slash grotto type situation and the food was delicious. Again, we did the tapa style sharing of different dishes. Everything that we ate was so good. The service was so good and the ambiance was just like, I mean, even if you just go there for a drink, it's totally worth going and sitting and just like taking it all in. So that's gonna be my honorable mention. If you're out that way, definitely check it out. It's definitely worth it. But uh, yeah, as for Mexico City, I hope that you guys enjoyed those dining recommendations. If you are heading to Mexico City, definitely give some of those a try. And if you do, let us know what you thought in the comments down below. And if you have any recommendations for your favorite places to dine in Mexico City, I would love to hear them from you as well, because let's be real, we are 100% gonna have to go back and uh, try this trip again, like for like, I don't even know, a month? There's just so much to see and do there one of my favorite cities that I've explored so far, and I'm really glad that we were able to share it with you. So in our next video, I am going to share some of our favorite dining experiences from Puerto Vallarta. For those of you who are traveling either as an all-inclusive and you just wanna like shake it up on a night or two, or traveling not all-inclusive and you need some great dining options in the area, we got you covered. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and until I see you in my next video, stay great, travel safe, and I'll see you then. Bye guys!